Five-year-old Stephanie Haber lived in Wagaman, Louisiana in 1978. One summer's day in June, Stephanie left her Astor Lane home at about 2.30 p.m. She headed to a friend's house to play. Stephanie was wearing a pink checkered top, pink shorts, and her ice blue prescription glasses. She never made it to her friend's house, and she did not return home for dinner. Her parents, Joyce and Donald Haybear, called 911 to report her missing. Joyce was quoted as saying, This is hell. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, not even the devil. A multi-day search of the family's neighborhood ensued. The FBI joined the case. Investigators ran down tip after tip. The Haybears even hired psychics, but no sign of Stephanie could be found. Five months later, a hunter discovered Stephanie's partial skeletal remains in a wooded area down a shell road in Royal St. Charles Parish in Louisiana. This is about 20 miles from Stephanie's home. Her body was tied up against a tree. Investigators could not determine how she lost her life, but could confirm that she had been assaulted. Detectives focused on Stephanie's then 16-year-old neighbor, Roger Alexander. Stephanie was friends with his little sister, and she attended a sleepover at their house the night before she disappeared. Alexander maintained his innocence. On the day Stephanie went missing, he was a few blocks away at his cousin's house on Dandelion Drive, helping repair a car. Several witnesses vouched for him. Still, investigators insisted that Alexander was responsible. St. Charles Parish prosecutors presented a case against him to a grand jury, but they declined to indict Alexander. The Wagaman neighbors who searched through the summer heat for Stephanie watched from their lawns as investigators repeatedly searched Alexander's home. Even after a 2008 DNA test excluded him, authorities did not declare him innocent. Suspicion also fell on 70-year-old Daniel Parks. He was a friend of the Haber family who babysat Stephanie. In 2014, he was sentenced to life in prison, convicted of assaulting a 7-year-old girl in 1979. The victim in this case testified that Parks once told her she would end up like poor Stephanie. Parks denied harming Stephanie, and investigators could not find any evidence that he was involved. In 2003, Stephanie's mother Joyce contacted a man named Mikel, who is the chief of the district attorney's victims and witness assistant division. Mikel recalls that Joyce said to him when they first met, she kept saying, her case is just sitting there, please do something. All I know is my child was tied to a tree and left for animals to get her. Mikkel met with prosecutors and detectives seeking new ways to identify the person responsible. In 2012, a distraught Jay Franklin reached out to Mikkel and said that he knows who took Stephanie's life. Jay said that his father, Jason Franklin Sr., was responsible. Jason was a U.S. Army veteran. He married Joyce Vanette in 1970 in New Orleans and worked as an electrician's helper. The couple bought a home on Astor Lane, about five houses from Stephanie's home. Jason was a serial predator who targeted children. In 1966, he was convicted of attempted assault on a young girl. Jason targeted children who didn't tell because they had been threatened or were too horrified by what had happened. Other times, they weren't believed. Jay Franklin reached out to Mikkel because his wife Michelle Franklin had convinced him he'd never know peace until he spoke up. Since childhood, he had bounced between homes, abused and traumatized by what he had been through. He was mentally damaged, Michelle Franklin said. He didn't know what love was until he got with me. Over the next nine years, Jay Franklin revealed physical abuse he had suffered at Jason Franklin Sr.'s hands and how it links to Stephanie's case. Jay said that his father beat him and assaulted him between the ages of two and six. Jason Franklin Sr. also used his son to lure other victims, usually young girls, to their home under the pretense of a play date. Young Jay Franklin was sometimes forced to take part. Jay then told investigators one of those girls was Stephanie Haybear. According to him, it was his mother Joyce Vanette who abducted Stephanie and brought her to Jason Franklin Sr. Since both Jay and Stephanie's mothers are called Joyce, I'll refer to Jay's mother as Vanette to prevent any confusion. Jay said that when he was six years old, Vinette had him coax Stephanie into their car. Vinette then drove the children to a house in Lowling, Louisiana, where Jason Franklin Sr. was waiting. At some point, he put Stephanie into a car and told Vinette to follow. They then drove to a wooded area where Stephanie's body would later be found. Jason Franklin Sr. stripped Stephanie of her clothes and took Polaroid pictures of the child, forcing Jay to pose with her. 
Jay remembers Stephanie tearfully declaring, I'm telling my daddy. He believes this may have sealed her fate. Vinette then left with Jay. Jay told investigators that he saw his father binding Stephanie to a tree as they pulled away. When confronted by detectives, Joyce Vinette denied any involvement and called her son a liar. While speaking with investigators, Jay Franklin took detectives to some of Jason Franklin Sr.'s favorite hunting spots. They eventually ended up in a rural area of St. Charles Parish. Without realizing it, he directed them to the scene where Stephanie was found. Despite Jay Franklin's testimony, it still took authorities years to prepare the case. They had to determine what evidence was admissible, what charges he'd be eligible for, and definitely rule out the other suspects. Jay Franklin's credibility was bolstered by the statements of another victim who came forward. It was a 51-year-old woman whose story of childhood assault matched the version of events he told. She had never before disclosed the assaults. In 2018, 76-year-old Jason Franklin Sr. was arrested in connection to Stephanie's case. Her parents Donald and Joyce lived long enough to see him arrested. Both of them passed away in 2020. Unfortunately, the case never made it to trial. In January of 2022, Jason Franklin Sr. lost his life due to a respiratory illness while in prison. In June of 2022, 50-year-old Jay Franklin also lost his life due to a drunk driver. Investigators with the cold case team described it as a heartbreaking loss. Jay's stepmother, Kathy Vanette, said, I think he's the bravest person I ever met. To be able to basically rip his whole life apart and put it out there. Kathy Vanette is married to Jay Franklin's stepfather, Henry Vanette. Henry was married at one point to Joyce Vanette, Jay Franklin's mother. Without the suspect and the main witness, investigators officially closed Stephanie's case. Vanette currently lives in Alabama and hasn't been formally charged or arrested yet. On February 26, 1999, human remains were discovered in a wooded area near the intersection of Clifton Spring Road and Clifton Spring Church Road in Decatur, Georgia. An autopsy concluded that the remains belonged to an African-American boy between the ages of five and seven. He was wearing a blue and white plaid shirt, red denim jeans, and brown Timberland boots. Due to the advanced state of decomposition, Authorities were unable to determine the cause and manner in which the boy lost his life. Unfortunately, they were also unable to identify him. The case went cold for many years. In May of 2020, a tipster came forward. She saw an artistic rendering of the unidentified child that had been distributed by authorities and contacted the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. She told investigators about a woman she knew by the name of Teresa Ann Bailey Black. Black was living in Charlotte, North Carolina with her six-year-old son, William Deshaun Hamilton. In December of 1998, without notice, she withdrew William from school and then moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Black later returned to Charlotte the following year, but without William. According to detectives, she gave conflicting accounts at the time regarding her son's whereabouts. The tipster believed that the boy found in Georgia was William because they looked similar. The DeKalb County Police Department, along with county prosecutors, later followed up on the lead and resumed actively investigating the case. Early in 2022, DNA linked Black to the child's remains. She was arrested in Phoenix, Arizona on June 29, 2022. She is currently waiting to be taken to Georgia. Authorities have not specified how William's life was taken or a possible motive. Angeline Hartman, who is the Director of Communications at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, said, this case is a perfect example of why we never give up hope. For more than two decades, a woman in Charlotte followed her gut feeling that something wasn't right. She made phone calls, scoured the internet, and talked to anyone who would listen. We're grateful she never stopped until she found that rendering of William online and gave investigators the missing piece to help solve the 23-year-old mystery. William was a bright and artistic six-year-old who possessed a keen sense of humor, according to those who knew him. Investigators are now seeking the public's assistance to help piece together a more concrete timeline of Black and William's movements. Authorities say Black worked at a now-defunct Atlanta strip club known as Pleasers and may have been getting assistance from the Atlanta Day Shelter for Women and Children for a brief period. Anyone with additional information related to the case is urged to contact the DeKalb County District Attorney's Cold Case Tip Line at 404-371-2444.